What's up, y'all? That is a tune called Dunmore Lasses. Uh, it's one that's been on the list for a while, but for some reason I just kind of never got around to it. It's a real common standard session tune, though I haven't really heard it in a while. I guess maybe that's why I never got around to it recently. It just hasn't come up. Let's dive in with the A part here, as we always do. Basic melody first. section. Hopefully you got that. Try the second section here. It starts the same, just finishes a little bit different. And then we go around again for the second time. Play the whole A part all the way through, see if you can play along. tweaks to that. Uh, hopefully you're able to hang with that. There's a few different ways to do it. Uh, we'll play the B part now, jumping up to the higher octave, again, as is fairly common. section here, second half of the B part. So that finishing walk-down phrase ought to sound fairly familiar, that's the same way that the A part ended. So hopefully some of this is at least a little bit repetitive and you're able to lock it in. All right, whole B part, all the way through. Hang on for the ride. then we go around to the A part again. So let's break down some ornamentation. There's a lot you can do with this tune because there's a lot of repetitive E's, which are cool because you can do a few different things. You can do the kind of standard roll, rolling on G as well, or uh, you could do a cran, which I don't do a lot of on E. I tend to do it on D for some reason. I just never really do it on E, but it's an option. Or, Third option, you could do what I like to call a triple roll. Do a triple roll in the G too, if you were so inclined. A couple of ways to play that, a couple of options, uh, but that's one of the reasons why I like this tune is because it's got some of those nice cool spots to play with some, some options on the low E and in the second part, the high E. Carrying on. I'll slide into that B. I just think it sounds kind of dirty and cool. I also slide into that roll. That's something I, I probably do a lot. Combining ornaments, I think, has a neat effect, and I don't do it every time, but I think when, when you use it, it can, it can sound pretty cool. So, could do a slide into just a simple tap, a few things. When I do those short rolls on the E's, I do tongue those to, to give it a little bit of separation. There's a definite break in between the notes there. So, from the E, drops back down. 
I'll usually cut that one, could slide into it. Something to just sort of announce that we're, we're recycling that phrase, I guess. Same thing there, except by the second time through, you've got time to do a full roll. And I'll still tongue to separate those those notes there and give it a bit of um, bit of groove, hopefully. When I hit that high G, that's the highest note in the phrase. I'll do a short roll on that. A lot of things there. I'll double tap that G when I come back to it. Could pop the E. I, I, sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll ornament every one of those notes. Bum, bum, bum. Running down the line. I don't always do it. Maybe it's a bit much. Landing on that A, I'll do a short roll there. Typically we'll hold that out. You don't really have to. You could, could do a whole kind of line there, but a lot of times I'll kind of stick the landing on that A. And then as I come back to it, that's the trick I use a lot. I've demonstrated this in a lot of videos. Uh, what I would just call like a popping ornament. Same thing on the E on the F sharp as I hit that. And then back around to repeat. When we jump up in the B part to that G, I'll usually just cut that. You could do a short roll and hold it if you wanted to. And in fact, since it does that sort of looping phrase, I'll cut both of those just to kind of mirror it a little bit. Nothing there except the same short roll phrase that we demonstrated that we talked about in the A part. Could slide and hold that note. That's the same as in the A part, landing on that A. There again, the same rolls, the same same kind of phrasing I would do there. Could do a triple roll if your whistle will support it on that high A, or high E rather. You could do the cran on the high E. Couple of options, couple of ways to play it. When I come out of that phrase to go back into that high bit, I do like to do the long roll. And you could do a double cut on the E, which I've talked about. These two fingers to cut there. It gives it sort of a, maybe a more uniform sort of rhythm, kind of linear. And finishing the phrase the same as we did on the A part. I hope you guys like this tune. I um, hope it's one that's on your list, something you've been wanting to learn, because it's, a, again, a good standard session tune, one that's worth diving into. Let me know what you think. See you all in the next one. Cheers, guys. So there's a definite break in between the notes there. Hi, airplane. Hi, airplane. What airplane? Definitely don't hear an airplane. Southwest, hey Southwest, what's up bud?